What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the fuel filter on a 2015 Torag. The fuel filter on this generation Torag is located towards the back of the engine compartment on the passenger side, right next to our coolant reservoir, our ABS module, and where our intake piping is. Couple of things before we get started. One, we are going to be opening up the fuel system, so of course we're going to need to bleed the air out before we start the car up. Two, we're working with diesel fuel, which can be kind of nasty stuff. So we wanna make sure we're wearing gloves and we're working clean. If you do spill any diesel fuel on any of this stuff while we're working, you wanna clean it up right away so that it doesn't do any damage to any of this plastic or hoses or anything like that. And if it saturates into this firewall protected layer right here, you're probably gonna get stinky diesel fuel smell coming from your car for quite some time, but we don't want that, so be really careful. Step one for me is to get this hose as out of the way as we can. We don't need to do too much with it, just move it a little bit. You can even bungee cord it like right here, that'll help too. We'll go ahead and zip tie it out of the way. Next, what I like to do is take some absorbent mats and just kind of tuck it around the fuel filter. That way, if we do get any that kind of spills out, we can just pull the absorbent mat out and we don't have to worry too terribly much about it. Next, we're gonna remove the five bolts that hold on the lid for the housing. You're gonna need a T20 Torx for this. Now, we're working with diesel fuel, not gasoline, so you can use power tools here, but these housings and everything are pretty soft, so I typically just prefer to use hand tools. As you can see, these bolts are pretty small too, so be careful with these, we don't wanna lose one. In fact, we'll just go ahead and set them in a tray right there. Now, this should not be under any kind of pressure or anything like that, so once you get this last bolt out, you really should not get any fuel spurting up, but you might get a little bit that flows out of that housing. I'm already smelling diesel fuel. In fact, let's go ahead and put a little bit more absorbent matting down just to work a little bit cleaner. All right, we have all of our bolts out. Before we take this off, we wanna make sure we get something to put our fuel filter in so we don't drip fuel all the way across our engine compartment. Something like an old Ziploc bag to temporarily store it is a pretty good idea. So we'll go ahead and open up our Ziploc bag here. We'll pull our lid off. You can see we're getting a bit of fuel coming out already. Typically the filter sticks to the lid. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. You can just hold it here and let it drain. What I like to do is back it over where our absorbent mat is and just dump the contents of the filter out, set it upside down, let it drain out. So this filter wasn't actually super dirty, not the worst I've seen anyway. But since we're right at that 80K, it's a good opportunity to do it. Let that drip out as much as you really feel like waiting. And then swoop it right into your bag. Take your bag, zip it up, and then go ahead and set this to the side. Now I spilled a little fuel here, so let's clean that up. We'll go ahead and grab our new filter here. Sometimes these come in plastic bags. I like to leave them sealed until I'm ready to use them. Go ahead and open that up. Before you put the new filter in, we wanna take a look down in here and look for any contamination, any metal, any organic matter. Now, if you find you have a bunch of yuck in there, you need to get that cleaned out. We would just simply drain the housing, wipe it all out, and then refill it with diesel fuel. We also wanna make sure before we put our filter in, we get a little bit of diesel fuel on our finger, lubricate these seals. Then what I do is I set the filter housing in very slowly so we don't overflow the housing. As I'm setting the lid down, I wanna put the feed side, this pin in the middle, into the blue seal. Then very slowly put the filter in. If you do it too fast, you're gonna just splash diesel fuel all over the place. Next, we'll start our bolts by hand. Make sure if you're doing it like this and putting these absorbent mats down, you don't get any pinched in the filter housing. We don't wanna cause any leaks. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead Pull this one out of the way. Then we wanna just snug these down. We wanna do a diagonal pattern. So go across, think about if like you were torquing a wheel down, same kind of thing, snug them down. You can even push down on the filter housing a little bit to help. Now you don't wanna tighten these down very tight. In fact, the torque spec is only five Newton meters, which a lot of torque wrenches don't really even go that low. So if you don't have a torque wrench that goes down to five Newton meters, snug them up, but do not over tighten this. It's very easy. You don't wanna to have to either drill out and tap the housing, get a new one, or do a bolt and a nut. You don't wanna to have to do any of that, so just don't over tighten it. Snug, 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 snug. I had to dig deep in the torque wrench drawer to 
find one that went down to five newton meters. But that torque spec is just a little bit past my snug. So once that is torqued down, let's go ahead and get all these rags out of the way here. We can clean up any fuel we may have spilt. Double check down the sides of the canister too. We don't want to leave any fuel down there either. Boy, this whole engine compartment could probably use a detail. If you're worried about residual fuel smell, you could always clean it with some like glass cleaner or something like that, just to get rid of that little extra bit. Get rid of our tray, snip our zip tie, put our coolant line all back where she was. And that's pretty much it. Now we're done with the nuts and bolts mechanical side. Now we gotta bleed any air out of the system before we start the car. We're gonna be using VCDS here, but use whatever scan tool you have. If you don't have VCDS or OBD11 or whatever, I'll show you a little trick that kind of works, but really this is the best way to do it. So we're gonna go into our gateway installation list. We're gonna go into engine. Good thing we have no fault codes. We are gonna to go to basic settings. Click our little drop down menu here. Now actually this is a place where you might get a little bit different verbiage depending on what tool you're using. It may say checking the transfer fuel pump, it may say drain fuel tank. Either way what this is going to do is this is going to power up our fuel pumps and fill our fuel filter housing and bleed any air out. So we'll highlight that, we'll hit go. I can hear the pump running. Typically these pumps will run for three minutes and then shut off so it doesn't overheat. I've found that when just doing a fuel filter, unless we drain that canister all the way, you really only have to let this run for a few seconds. However, this is a great opportunity to make sure that we don't have any fuel leaks from the filter we just replaced. Don't look like we have any leaks and I'm pretty sure we got all the air out, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that there. Done, go back. And as I always do, after I do anything, I go ahead and double check our faults. No faults, excellent. If you're paranoid or you did drain that fuel canister all the way, you can run that again. I mean, you can run it as many times as you want, but I don't really think there's a need to do that. All right, so we have our new filter in, all the air bled out of the system. We double check to make sure we didn't have any leaks and we are good to go. We need to dispose of that fuel filter properly. At the shop, they were always disposed of with the oil filters, so that may be the best route for you as well. Now, I mentioned that you do need a scan tool in order to bleed the air out of the system, and, and that is true. That is the by the book repair manual way to do it. What happens if you don't have that scan tool? What you can do is several key cycles to prime the fuel system. Pretty much every time we open the door or every time we turn the ignition on, our fuel system primes. So if you have a regular key, you can put the key in, you can turn the ignition on, shut it off, do that three or four times. That should get all the air out. If you have a car that has a push button start, like the Torag, what you can do is just push the push button start without your foot on the brake and the car won't start, it'll just turn the ignition on. Three or four, maybe five of those, and you should be good to go. But again, the proper way by the repair manual is to use the scan tool in order to bleed the air out. So there we have it, super easy DIY. Congratulations if you just did your first fuel filter. This should take you 20 or 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, depending on how familiar you are with the scan tool you're using and whatnot. A couple of other things, make sure you're working safe, wear gloves, wear safety goggles, work in a well-ventilated area. I got the garage door open, as you can see, so there's plenty of air, plus I got fans on, so plenty of air movement. As always, I'll put links to everything we used down in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.